<laughs> so, was the mission of the panel to make Stephen cry? Um, no, but that's like always a, you know, it's a benefit. You know. um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, it wasn't. But, you know, I think, I, I have to say, we were all talking about it afterwards. I think we all felt a lot more emotional than we were expecting. Mm. You know, it was a little surprising. I think, you know, our very first Comic-Con panel, it was really important. Like, you know, coming out in Comic-Con is a new show. You feel a lot of pressure. You, you want to have a good panel. You want to have a good show. And um, we've always, I think, put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make Comic-Con special for the fans. Um, so when we come out for the last time, it's, it's emotional, it's, it's impactful, and you know, you do think about the first time, and you know, I kept thinking about like the first through fifth times, mm -hmm. and um, it's like, oh, this is, this is, you know, this is touching. How are you guys handling uh, Felicity's absence in these, this last season? Not well, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's hard, I mean, it's, you know, it, it's hard, but um, we're, you know, the, the great, Thing that the writers did uh, in season seven is I think they, they explained in a great way why Felicity is, is absent. Um, and Felicity's acknowledged um, there's a moment, like it's scripted, you know, I never can promise what's going to make the final cut. There's, a, uh, I think, a very sort of Felicity centric moment in uh, the season premiere. Um, you know, the, the, the main thing is we. we don't deny the existence of the character. I think a lot of shows, when a major actor leaves the show, they suddenly like forget that character, you know, and don't acknowledge that character. And we don't do that. Like we're we're constantly referencing Felicity. Felicity's super important, and so she's alive in the show, even if Emily's not in the show. Any chance you might do a Three's Company where you have her do the number when? Remember when they fired her, and so, but she wasn't remember. fired because she had a contract, so they would have phone calls with her. Um, I don't remember this at all. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne Summers was, was, in that Summers was fired. Oh, oh wow. And so they put yeah. her into another little set. Oh, really? Oh, my God, I didn't know that. I didn't know my contract. TV history pretty well. I'm a little surprised <laughs> like, I don't know that. Considered having something like that, like, should they um, have to come, because like, I know everyone's saying she's playing backstage, but considered having, like, a video chat or, like, little pieces that you might be able to sprinkle throughout I, the season? It's, it's. It's a great idea. It's the first time I'm hearing of it. Um, you know, to be honest, look I, at the end of the day, like I, you know, I was just saying uh, to another another panel of, of journalists, we we of course want Emily as involved in season eight as she would like to be, um, and you know we will be darkening her doorstep, um, you know. But at the end of the day, you know she has to do what's right for her, and. You know, we've we've written out the character, I think, in a way that's satisfying. Mm -hmm. But if we can work out a way for her to return for the final season, of course, we would love that. You know, um, there's a lot of conversations that, that have to be had, and uh, you know, we're gonna have them. Does Suzanne Summers' ideas interesting? It never occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> if she's moved from Vancouver, then you can set a studio up wherever she is, do the little vignettes in like maybe three days, but have enough for maybe six episodes. I, I like the idea that like you know Emily has like a room in her house, you know, <laughs> that, that, that she can be in, but uh, it never occurred to me. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you.